My mother and her siblings were absolutely banned from eating outside the home. But on the rare occasions my grandmother traveled, they somehow managed to convince my grandfather to buy this beans and stew dish from a roadside trader. Now as an ode to her childhood, I decided to recreate this dish for her. Let's get started. Now first I have like two small cups of beans and I'm gonna add some water to it. I'm adding enough water for two reasons. Number one, to adequately soften the beans because you know it takes a long time for beans to get soft. And number two, I don't want the beans dry. I want it to essentially create its own stock. Adding some ground fresh pepper. Add to your tolerance level, remember. And now I'm adding some tomato paste. Here are some chopped onions. I love adding a lot of onions to my beans. Growing up, my mom told me never to add salt at this stage of cooking beans. For some reason, it um, slows down the softening of the beans. So now I'm going to just cover up and let it boil to the soft. So now I want to check if my beans are soft enough. I'm not just pressing the bean seeds with my finger, I'm also tasting it. Pressing and tasting give you two different consistencies I've learned. It's soft, yes, but not soft enough, so I'm going to leave it for a little while longer. I want it really mushy. Now let's try this again. I'm going to taste again to see if it's soft enough. And it's perfect! Now I'm going to season my beans. First I'm going to add a little bit of crayfish and then some bouillon cubes. Remember I always say, your best utensil in the kitchen are your taste buds. Always taste. It tastes amazing. So now I'm going to leave this to marry for about 10 minutes, then come back to it. Now my beans is done. Take it off the fire. <laughs> Try using oven mitts. I'm shaking my palm oil bottle because I want all those sediments and things that have settled in the bottle to come back together. So I'm pouring about four or five tablespoons, adding some onions. Now my ground and boiled fresh tomato, tatashi and pepper. So what I did earlier was boil my tomato, tatashi and peppers to remove all the excess moisture before frying it now. I'm going to leave this to fry for a few minutes until the tomato mixture looks like it's separating in the pot. Now I'm going to add my diced, cooked, fried meat. Now these things are addictive. I kept popping into my mouth like it was groundnut. It's a wonder I have anything left to cook with. I'm tossing and turning, making sure they all marry. Can you see myself? I'm still eating them. <laughs> One more. Oh, I'm so excited. It tastes good. So now, I'm going to pour in my cooked beans into the mixture. making sure they all blend in well. I'm adding another bouillon cube. So 
So now I'm going to add a little bit of water. The consistency for me is a little bit too thick. Not a lot, just a little bit of water. Now cover and let those two mixtures combine. Nope, not that one. <laughs> yep, that's the one. Oh, I think my beans is ready. Oh, look at that. It looks luscious and glorious. It tastes amazing. Adding a little bit of chili to garnish. You don't have to do that. Plus, I like a lot of chili, remember? So I was warned heavily by one of my Instagram followers. You do not cut agege bread with knife. So I've learned my lesson. So this is hand-torn agege bread <laughs> with my bean stew. Oh look, that even makes it sound all shishi. Hand-torn. That looks amazing. Feel free, please, to pair with dodo. You know what? For tomorrow's breakfast, I'm going to have this with sticky dodo. You know the dodo that's almost going bad and it's sticky and joins together? Oh, that is my thing. Now if you like this video and all the other ones on my channel, please subscribe and don't forget to follow me on all social media at Kemi Adetiba.